Good morning, folks. We've got solar flares, looks at tropical glaciers, confirmation of planetary phenomenon, and NOVA updates to close. But we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun with eruptive activity coming from the north on the incoming limb. Numerous events ripped away 90 degrees away from Earth, with the peak event reaching M-class flare range. That and the high C-class flares have been flashing up the southeastern quadrant, starting over Australia, and continued ionospheric excitement as the Earth rotated. Another one this morning, flashing the Indian Ocean. We're going to have to keep watching that region for sustained activity as it turns in, and despite their utter quiet, there is enough morphing and motion, not to mention enough sunspots, to keep eyes open for a rise in southern activity as well. First up in the articles today is a satellite comparison from 1980 up to now from Landsat of one of the four remaining tropical glacier sites. This is Papua, and the remaining ice from the last glacial event is almost gone here and nudged south of the equator. There are tons of people that got interested in the strange radio signals from Jupiter earlier this year, but it's been on our radar since 2012 when the radio signals began to become anomalous. We had speculated it was a change in the planet's magnetic field, which is believed to work those radio signals by accelerating electrons, and here today, we get a beautiful confirmation of that at Saturn as a CME struck while Cassini was there, and the data analysis has finally showed it instantly excited the radio emission from the Saturnian field. We can look back and give an extra check mark to that shift at Jupiter. Up next, it's the first of two stories hitting the M51 galaxy. This one is taking the top spot in astronomy news in the mainstream, the claim that a planet has been discovered in another galaxy. This is due to the light curve the star presented, which they say debunks all other options. Interestingly, and as always, they once again did not look at the rapid recurrent NOVA option for this one, which would have a similar light curve. We've seen NOVA with no ejecta, NOVA ejections with no flash, and this one feels like the latter, like Betelgeuse a year ago. We're expanding the NOVA category possibilities even further here, as the fastest NOVA record is broken, and it's not a supernova, but one that has boomed before, and will boom again. Back to M51 for the finale. Folks, this is a different star dimming in M51, and they expressly say it's like the extreme version of Betelgeuse. This is where that wider range of NOVA events must come into play, to help recognize that it may in fact have spent that two years as a darker site, because it was surrounded by the remnant shell it later blew away with stellar winds and flares. We greatly appreciate your support. The Sun's version of this is the crescendo of the cyclical disaster. In fact, it's the only thing that explains all the evidence. Learn about that with the disaster playlist below the video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.